What were you listening to when you were making this record? Nothing. What? Nothing. I can't listen to music when oh. I'm making music. Is that kind of like when you don't want to read someone else's essay because yes. you're worried you're going to copy it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Triple track. Yeah. Triple track. Yeah. Triple track. Like even standing in an elevator with elevator music is just like, oh. Or like airport lounge music, you know. Do you listen um, to podcasts or anything like that or is it just... Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I do. I do like uh, just people talking. I love the sound of people talking. In fact, there's a thing on the album at the start of uh, track 11. Um, it's actually just from a podcast that I was listening to. I just, I just, I don't know why it's these, these two guys talking. And for some reason, I just felt compelled to put on the album. Yeah. I think we've gotten aspects of time from the songs you've released already, particularly Patience as well. Mm -hmm. Why was time something that you wanted to explore more on this record? I don't know at the end of the day. Um, it's something that's always intrigued me. And it's kind of like I just love the way like, like we as humans, like humans' relationship with time, it just like creates so many different emotions and so many different things. You know, like... Being obsessed with the past, you know, being obsessed with being uh, overwhelmed with nostalgia and being anxious for the future and being, you know, confident about the future, you know, mm. and living in the moment, all those kind of things. I just think it's such a uh, vast source of inspiration for me, at least, you know. Yeah, definitely. And like, and certain types of music make me think of memories and make me think of that kind of thing. And I think this kind of music does for me. So let's talk through some of these tracks individually. Posthumous Forgiveness. This one is such a personal song for you. Do you think the Kevin Parker of 2009 could have written something like this or is it very much a decade on? Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, but that's just something that I've gotten better at as my career has gone on is like that openness because every time I've cut off a little bit of myself and put it out there. It's like the 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 reward has been many times over that, you know, like many times worth it. Um, like seeing people connect with it and hearing people say that they connected with it. Um, so that's kind of something I've just done more and more and like, yeah, yeah. What did your loved ones think about it when they heard it? They really moved. Yeah. They really moved, yeah. They really touched and... Um, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Yeah, it was um, because you know, like, I me being the one making my music, I don't, I don't, I don't expect it to be as moving for everyone else. And I forget that it has a, that it can be, um, powerful. I forget that like I have an ability to make music that can be emotional. You know, so um, yeah, it was uh, it was really really touching. These drums was one of the first comments I wrote after hearing the first song. <laughs> Good. Just these drums in all caps. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how you've approached the drums on this record because they do really feel like a, a main feature, a mm -hmm. standout. I mean, drums are just the most important thing to me. Like, like rhythms to me are almost more important than the music. Um, I don't know why that is. I just... Um, it's kind of the thing that I spend the most time thinking about and, like, imagining if I'm ever just you know stressed or or like even like watching movies like I find myself just just playing the drums in my head when I'm watching movies I don't know I don't know what it is it's a way of like it kind of it's like it's like a, it's like a um you know some people have like uh fidget toys mm -hmm. or like beads is that oh a thing? yeah the fidget spinner fidget just, spinner yeah yeah it's like a fidget, it's like a mental fidget spinner yeah wow me thinking of drums um so th that obviously ends up informing the music. Drums are the first instrument you learned, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's probably no coincidence. What do you think young KP would think about the drums on this record? I reckon he'd think they're pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, probably not enough double kick. Mm. <laughs> probably not enough Ben Gillies, um, frog stomp double kick. Amp it up. But, yeah, um, but, uh, yeah I, hope, I hope he would have been pleased. Yeah. So Lost in Yesterday has themes of Groundhog Day, which again is really tapping into that notion of time. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one's about um, like nostalgia as a drug to which we are all addicted. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's about over, uh, over romanticizing the past and also the opposite, like uh, being consumed with regret, you know, and like what you should have done differently with anything. What are you nostalgic for at the moment? Anything that 
happened a long time ago. Mm. Like, like all of our memories always seem to become richer and, and stronger the longer it's been since it's happened, you know, which is kind of what the song's about. So, um, yeah, yeah, everything. On that note of not overthinking things, you've actually adjusted the track borderline mm-hmm. for this record, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Speaking of overthinking, okay. <laughs> Putting you on blast. No, but I think it's it's tighter, mm-hmm. it's shorter. Oh, thank you. It's what was, shorter, <laughs> it's better. Your okay. songs are too long, Kevin. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's too loud. Why, why did you want to adjust this one? Honestly, I believe that I kind of just ran out of time mm. uh, making it. like, And I was so kind of in my own head about the song like the way I describe it is the way it sounds now is the way that I was hearing it when I released it the first time Mm -hmm. so like for me the drums sounded because I was yeah the drums sounded just like heaps more um hard hitting and there were just things that I could hear in the song that I didn't realize no one else could for example the bass line Mm. for and which is kind of just uh, an example of um, your lack of perspective while you're working on a song mm. or anything, any, 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 anything that anyone's working on ever. You know, like you lose perspective while you're working on it, which is, which is good too. It's kind, of, it's kind of beautiful that you have no idea what you're doing, you know. Um, and so I thought everyone was able to hear the bass line in that song and then I slowly realised like, oh, no one can hear it, you know. It just sounds like it's kind of like mixed in with the song. So, Did people say that to you? Um, well, no, I mean, like, no one ever says what they can't hear. I was yeah. like, you know, anyway. Um, but I I, def- I just feel like I wasn't finished with it. And readjusting music is something that artists have done in the past. Do you think it's a little bit of a slippery slope? It's, I was just about to say. It's yeah. a slippery slope. It's dangerous. Um, but I also think, like, the way the, the way the world changes and the way music changes and the way it's made, it, like, paves the way for things like that. Hmm. Um, that are new and scary at the time. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, music is what music is because of the way we listen to it and the way we make it. Um, the fact that songs are usually four minutes and albums are usually 40 minutes, you know, it's kind of just like, why, why are those things the way they are? Um, anyway, I could talk about that for ages. But, yeah. but uh, it, it, is, it is dangerous and I think, I think it's, um, yeah, you've got to be careful. Alongside your own work, you've collaborated with a number of different artists in the studio, particularly in the hip-hop world, Travis Scott, ASAP Rocky, Kanye West. What's the biggest lesson you've learned working with one of those artists or all of them? Um, Cheesy one, but believe in yourself. Mm. You know, all those artists um, are people that have, I guess, um, believed in themselves despite so much else going on despite doubt from people around them from everyone you know um so yeah it's a cheesy one but it's a it's a very valuable lesson yeah and uh, I guess also to be open not be afraid to open up to people around you because that's when you can realize things about yourself that you wouldn't have otherwise Listening to the record, I feel like you've injected that self-belief and openness into this one. Would you agree? Sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I've, uh, it's uh, not without um, – I've had to drag it out of me, but, I, but it was something that I really just wanted to – because I, some of my favourite music is music where people have just gone – you can just hear them going, oh, like, like just putting their all into you. <laughs> just just – uh, yeah, being really like having it's like self belief, you know, and I and I want I like, and I want I want my music to have that quality mm. rather like, and less like, doubt and holding back, you know, because that yeah, it's a powerful powerful thing in art when that exists. Tomorrow's dust is. A very percussive one, but what I want to ask about is the voice of the woman at the end on mm-hmm. the phone. Who's that? It's my wife. <gasps> yeah. And what's she talking about? She is. Uh, well, I, I, I wanted. I wanted to get just this kind of like ambient. Um, of like someone talking on the phone, her talking on the phone, um, and because like you know, 
so much of this album is, is, is to do has to do with like the future and like what's going to happen, like the rest of your life kind of kind of thing. Mm. Um, and so I just got her to talk about whatever, like talk about the future, you know, like what are you going to do, like make something up. But she drew from her past, like uh, coming back from, she spent some time in London. And when she came home, she was kind of like strung out. She didn't really know what to do. She was kind of at a loss, you know. So she was just literally talking from her own perspective um, a few years ago when she was kind of like, she felt like she didn't know where she was going in life and the future was so uncertain. I kind of like the voyeuristic aspect of it as well. It feels yeah. like a phone call I'm not meant to be privy to. Exactly. Yeah. I, lo- I love that stuff. Yeah. On track, power ballad. Yep. What musical influences do you think inspired this one? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, undoubtedly, but a super tramp because that's kind of my go-to 70s power ballad kind of reference. Um, I mean, like... <laughs> I would say, I would say Meatloaf, but but that's such an uneducated reference. Like I haven't even really listened to that much Meatloaf, but to me, that's what um, Meatloaf sounds like. To me, it's really like emotional song, and I feel like to anyone that can relate to this kind of, to what this song has to offer, it's it's it can it can the potential can be really powerful. Hopefully. Mm. Now that you've said Meatloaf, I want this performed at an NRL Grand Final. Ooh. I want you. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> Front and centre. Okay. Yeah, right. Me just singing horrendous yeah, attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any predictions on how we're going to adjust and issue music over the next decade? No, but I love thinking about it. Yeah. I love thinking about it. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, just us talking about being able to change music afterwards. Imagine if music wasn't this thing where you finish it and you put it out and then everyone, you know, it's not like a painting where it's finished. Like, you know, like in fashion, fashion designers put out a line and then they're continually evolving it over the course of the, um, what do you call it, whatever it's called. In, a, in that way, fashion designers have this luxury of being able to continually change what they've started putting out at the start of the season or whatever. And musicians and, well, musicians don't have that luxury why are those things the way they are? You know, so maybe maybe there'll be like a platform of music where an artist just keeps changing, just like like you you just dial into a, a, a service where you listen to it and it's every time you go back it's a little bit different. You know, it's evolved a bit or it's changed just, just because of that's the way it is. You know? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. No, I think there is this obsession with the final product and the, mm-hmm. the final release. Mm-hmm. But it's good though. It's good. Like that's also good too. And I remember, I remember listening back to um, a couple of Kanye West songs that he changed, and I was like, "What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't go back." Yeah, yeah. He, he made some. Was that the, Life of Pablo? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Even even um, some songs on Yeezus, he went back and made some vocals more distorted or something. Yeah, right. And uh, and it was kind of like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And then there's the whole <laughs> there's the whole like Star Wars thing, like this interviewer in. Um, in Germany the other day, in Berlin, he, he likened me to George Lucas because I was because of Borderline. He was really? like, yeah, well, not like me to George Lucas, but he was like, um, oh, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing. And I was yeah. like, oh, that hurts, man, because no one wanted George Lucas to change Star Wars. It was like, why did you change all these things? You yeah, know? no, absolutely. So yeah, making music is such a solitary, personal practice for you over the years how have you managed taking that to such huge live stages you played Coachella last year mm-hmm. how do you go with your on stage persona and taking it to these huge audiences I just have to um accept that that's that's the best thing I can do for my music you know and just try not to be lost in my own head about it and just and just be be that character do the best thing I can do for my music even though my like even though my um, introverted self is kicking and screaming the entire time. Do you ever take notes from the band on the music? Of course, it, yeah. yeah. in the yeah. making process? Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, like, they, those, those are the guys that I rely on for the, for the brutal, honest mm. opinion. Mm-hmm. Or some of the people. Um, yeah, yeah. And where do you see Tame Impala heading in the next decade? Oof. Um, different places. Different places, definitely. Anything's possible. Um, I like to think that there's like that not even I can predict 
like what will happen and what kind of form it'll be. Because at the end of the day, it's it's kind of just whatever I'm doing and I don't want to be doing the same thing that I'm doing at any point in the future, like now in the future. So, so yeah, can be anything. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Well, Kevin Parker, thank you so much for coming through to Triple J today, talking us through your new record, The Slow Rush. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>